Well, welcome this morning to the Morning Star uh, Scottish Conference. My name is Pat Stewart. I'm uh, a member of the United General Executive Council. I'm a member of the British TUC General Council. Um, and I'm chair of the British TUC Women's Committee. Um, um, this is a conference, a timely opportunity to address key issues, political issues and challenges that we face in this time. Um, our communities have been devastated uh, and our economy, which was already severely weakened by a combination of speculative games from bankers and ideologically driven mantras of neoliberalism, has been run into the ground in front of our eyes um, by a shout of incompetence. The damage wrought upon our communities is already impacting most and those who are least able to pay the price of this government's determination to drive back the public sector. Um, to destroy much of the public sector and channel that money into the, the, the pockets of our friends, uh, essentially. Un unemployment is rising most for those groups which are um, at a disadvantage in the, in the economy. Young people's unemployment uh, is unacceptably high. Um, difficult for, for people with disabilities to get a job increasingly and the disgraceful announcement of the closure of Redpaw, uh, is it says everything about the attitude. Uh, of, of government and those in power uh, to protect its employment, uh, which is that they, they really don't believe in it. Um, they don't believe in, in, in mutual protection in our communities either. It's appropriate for me to say something here about the cost to women, um, because the British TUC Women's Conference starts this week on, on Wednesday, uh, and this feels like a time when the interests of women have been driven back by decades of all the hard work that we have done. The gender pay gap, even before this, this economic crisis, was still unacceptably high several decades after the, the Equal Pay Act. But now the faster rise in women losing jobs has seen the highest women's unemployment for over uh, a quarter of a century. I see some of the effects in my own not-for-profit sector of Unite, where a majority of women in the, there are a majority of women in our workforce, uh, and where organisations are contracting or closing down altogether. Uh, and the services they provide being lost in the community. But meanwhile, women are also suffering from the loss of those services as carers, as parents, as neighbours. It's a burden of missing services for the elderly, services for children, young, young people's services, <coughs> new services under serious attack all up and down these, these islands. Uh, much of the burden of that is picked up by women in the, the other roles in life, quite apart from losing their jobs. Um, and at the same time, the government is, is, um, seems bent on um, totally undermining, if not completely destroying, the, the Equality and Human Rights Commission. Um, if they do that, if they're allowed to do that, a key voice in the which should be able to criticise and challenge government on its policies will be lost. I think it's not something that we should take lightly. We have watched them pull the, the Commission so close to government that it's no longer properly independent as it should be and they're going to destroy what remains of its independence entirely unless we, we raise our voices on that. Um, so women certainly see that is part of the scene being set uh, for, for many of the rights that we want uh, at working in the communities to be destroyed. Task which lies ahead is to turn around the propaganda war, and I hope that's what we're going to be addressing thoroughly today, because we really need uh, to, to be continuing that debate. Um, it's perhaps the only thing that the government has been doing fairly competently. We still have people to convince that we're not all in this together. Uh, that this is not the only way forward, that they have to take their share of, of cuts and so on. Uh, the debate, of course, has even greater resonance in Scotland, where the Conservative Party is a, a small, electorally insignificant group for us, but nonetheless, like the proverbial back penny, keep turning up uh, in control of, of, of policy and budgets uh, to a degree that, that is, is democratically unacceptable, just enlighten our communities. Um, but let's not kid ourselves as we go into political battle. Even if this government falls tomorrow, even if the Liberals cut the, the, the cords, it's going to look a bit shaky, uh, that's going to be not shaky enough. Um, even if they fell tomorrow, we'd still not be into the weeds. Uh, it was Labour, the Labour Party still loathes, certainly in London, at least to distance itself entirely from the economic policies 
uh, of the Conservatives. And historically, it was Tony Blair who preached it just more recently than Thatcher on the need to embrace the neoliberal version of globalisation, to turn away from support for manufacturing, to embrace those areas such as financial services where we were deemed to have a comparative advantage. These policies have left us and many other nations with deeply damaged and ultimately unsustainable economies. We need a new economic plan and we needed it even if this crash had not happened. We still needed to address the, the economic uh, plan that underlies what our governments do. We need a new approach to economics, and uh, an economics managed as if it existed primarily, the economy persisted primarily to serve the needs of the people in our communities, not to serve the needs of fund managers and the super rich separate class uh, around the, the globe. Uh, and we've, we've needed that for a long time. An economy which is more localised, which trades fairly and which is environmentally sustainable. Those are all challenges for us now. And maybe we need to take a, a, something of a silver lining out of the, the clouds that are hanging over us, heavy and dark as they are at, at present, that, that, that this may all be forced as a player card, right? Thank you for coming today. I hope the day will be rewarded for, for, for all of you. Um, I'm going to introduce our speakers first and then we'll start on them with them in order. Uh, we're lucky enough to have Lynn Henderson here, who's the Scottish Secretary of, of PCS. Um, and we have uh, my, my father, is that my right? My right. Andrew, Andrew Murray, who is the Chief of Staff of, of uh, Unite, my own union, and is also Chair of the Stop the War Coalition. We have here Stephen Boyd, Assistant Secretary at the uh, STUC, and Jackson Cullinan, uh, one of my colleagues in, in, in UNITE, who's a political officer <coughs> for Scotland uh, in UNITE, as well as, as, as various other roles um, that he plays for us. So I'd like